Hi, I'm Brian with Pioneer Builders. This is part two on the Halo Subterra insulation installation video series. You might remember in the past, we actually went through the sub slab installation. Uh, this is a GPR product, graphite polystyrene. Well, that phase is done. You can see we've got the house framed up. We're gonna talk a little bit about what we did for the vertical facing of the concrete and then kind of a tricky transition. The way this particular site is set up is it steps up. So in other parts of the country, you might have a full basement. And in that case, you would do something a little bit different. Here, it's almost a hybrid where, in a sense, we have a double stud wall cavity. But another part of the wall is actually concrete followed by a furred in framed wall. So we'll talk a little bit later about the U factors, the R value, and how that kind of plays into what this wall actually performs like. But let's talk about the installation. So we did the sub slab installation, and then about six inches to a foot is where you come up with your insulation here. And what that does is it breaks the slab edge. You would be surprised how much heat loss you can get through your slab edge. So you want to get your construction um, sequencing down in order to get this piece in. And now what we have is a nice enclosure all the way around our concrete. Now this particular brand, uh, it's Logix is like the parent company, Halo Subterra, they have different thicknesses for their insulation. The different thicknesses equates to uh, less heat flow that can go through them. So we have two inches under the slab, and then we've got one inch coming up the slab edge. So all of this is one inches. After we have this in, we come back and we put this next vertical piece on. So that's later on in construction. It, it's all about sequencing. Then again, if you look at their specification sheet, and you can just get this on Amazon, they spec a 3M adhesive tape in their, um, in their spec. You know, it's like a three-part spec situation. And then you can tape all of your seams. Now, here's where the tricky transition comes in. When it comes to the top of the concrete wall, this is an eight-inch wall. But our exterior uh, wall is a two-by-six, which is actually five-and-a-half inches. So what do you do with that little gap? So you've got five and a half inches, and what is that? Two and a half inches of concrete that's exposed. You come up with your vertical face. Well, we want to wrap over the top of our concrete. But it's a two by six, so we did the five and a half, but remember, the actual height on that, on the flat, is one and a half inches. Well, we add two inch sub slab, we have one inch, coming against the concrete wall, you can order inch and a half. So if you're the estimator, you can figure all of those things in and get your materials quantities dialed in. So one inch here, now look at this. This one and a half inch is capping up over the concrete and it flushes out with this two by six. Now we can get our cavity insulation all the way in. Now we're gonna talk about the U factors in R values. Let me go grab some paper. All right, I have my handy Excel spreadsheets. I ran some math uh, recently to take a look at all this, but we wanna talk just for a minute about R factors and U values. These are the reciprocals of each other. For consumers, R values are super easy to understand. U factors, in my opinion, is a little bit more of a professional way of looking at heat flux or heat transfer through assemblies. So again, in this case, we have this portion of the wall, and I'll talk to you about how you figure out what the R value is or the U factor through that. We'll get a little technical here. So there's technically an air film. If we're starting from the inside out, there's an interior air film that does have some resistance to heat transfer. Uh, the higher the R value, the less heat that goes through. So all things, uh, generally you want a high R value. You want a small U factor. 
So you've got the air film, you've got half inch of drywall in our case, uh, five eighths would transmit less heat or allow it to transfer less. You've got three and a half inches of concrete, two by four, uh, but yeah, so you have to go with the actual depth here. You could have done a two by six wall, make services easier to run through. We wanted to save money. If you go with a two by six, you're actually gonna lose a little bit of floor area. It's uh, just knowing all the dials and making your own decisions. Now in this case, I'm kind of ignoring this gap here between this furred wall and the wall back there. Actually, let me back up, we're going through here. So now we've got our one inch of insulation that's R5, this is a stable insulation. Uh, then you've got your concrete wall, which is eight inches, and each inch has a certain amount of R value. So it's just a multiplication thing. Now on the outside, there is no cladding. Uh, so you don't have to worry about your sheathing, you don't factor in your siding, and you don't factor in your exterior air film. So this whole assembly running through here will have one total R value or U factor. But it gets a little more complicated because some of this is gonna have insulation depth and some of this is gonna have wood framing. And if we really wanted to get deep, you can figure out your bottom plates, your top plates, your window framing, your windows themselves, but we're keeping this really simple. So for this portion of the wall, we have an insulation path and a stud path. Now when we come up here, it's very similar with some differences. So we've got our interior air film. We have either our insulation path or our stud path, but the stud path involves a two by six and a two by four. Then you have to factor in your wall sheathing, your exterior cladding, and then your exterior air film. Let me show you the spreadsheets. All right, let's see if anybody's still watching this by this point. We'll get into our spreadsheets here. So here I've got the materials lined out, the R value per inch. You can find those in a lot of different areas. Then the actual inches for construction. Then I have the R value stud path and then the R value insulation path. Won't spend a whole lot of time in here, but as we get into our total R value, in the stud path, and I'm just gonna do rounding, this is not a perfect system, it's about an R12, where it's insulation, it's about an R28. Now this is only against the concrete, that's what this particular spreadsheet is about. Doing the inverse, it's about a .09 or a .08, R value stud path, U factor. This one is a .035, so let's just talk about that for a second. Again, remember you want a higher R value if you want more, in, more um, thermal resistance. You want a smaller U factor. So when you look at windows, that's what you're primarily gonna see is the U factor. Now as we come back in, I did one other thing. This U sub T is the weighted average of the total wall at 24 inch on center because that changes things too. And that is a .038. So again, that's a little worse than where it's insulation, but it's way better than where it's the wood frame stud. Uh, and then the R value for that is 25.9. So for the portion of the wall that is against the concrete, we're running at about an R25 or an R26 wall. But remember at the beginning of the video, we talked about how we stepped the foundation so we have that double stud area. Let's go back to a different spreadsheet and look at what that one's at. See which one's better. Won't, again, spend a whole lot of time, but where the studs are, it's about an R13. Where it's the double bay of insulation, it's about an R32. We frame it 24 inches on center, so that is .034, so it's a little bit worse than the .031, way better than the .077. That's the U value, the uh, weighted value for the R is R29. So we went from an R26 to an R29. Not surprising that it performed better. 
But earlier in the video, again, we talked about you could have done a two by six interior furred out wall. Maybe that would have made them very comparable. Steve Basic always says, there has to be something that's the worst performer in the building. Well, for this, it's definitely gonna be the windows. But even when it comes to your walls, there's trade-offs. Um, surprisingly, going from a two by six, or I'm sorry, a 24 inch on center to 16 didn't really affect things too terribly much. Now we're gonna show a weighted value from where it's the concrete wall to the double stud for that whole assembly there. And that's gonna be our last spreadsheet to take a look at. I'm calling this the halo. This is where it's concrete. The framing only is where it's that double stud, double cavity area. And I just took the numbers from the other spreadsheets, brought them over, and I just made up that the, this was 75% of the wall, 25%, and here's where we end up at. The total U factor, 0 0.0375, the R value, 26.6. So you can be specifying R21 in your insulation but if you really want to be accurate, if you're really doing energy modeling, if you really want to get into the details when it comes to equipment sizing, work with U factors. What did we find out? We're between an R26 and an R27, depending on what that ratio is. It'll change in here. Uh, I don't have to get that detailed, but I really wanted to show you a lot of these details so yes, there's the construction side of this insulation, but there's also understanding the performance. In summary, what did we talk about today? We talked about the sequencing of making sure that you planned your insulation when it comes to the construction side, but we also talked about the energy modeling side. Now, sometimes you have to get super detailed or you really need a good energy model. How can this help? What if you're going for passive house certification? you really need to pay attention to the details. Or what if you're going Energy Star rating? You too might wanna to pay attention much more to what's, what's built and just make sure where your energy, uh, what your energy requirements are. You can use prescriptive numbers, say it's an R21 wall, R49 ceiling, uh, only perimeter sub slab insulation. But if you start getting into a more engineered mentality, you can actually, like in Washington State, maybe get energy credits. Maybe it helps you out in Oregon with their energy code. But there's also the code consideration side of things. Now, what about the real world? This is where I'm just gonna be a guy. I do not figure out every stud in a house, every joist, every rafter. I don't have that kind of time, but I do think it's really important for everybody to go through this process to understand what their wall assembly is doing in terms of thermal transfer. Think of it this way. I know for a fact that if I go to Subway after shooting this and I get a six inch veggie and a glass of water, or I go to McDonald's and get a Big Mac, large fry, large Coke, one of those is going to have way more calories than the other. One of them is gonna make me feel better than the other. So it's kind of the same thing here. Once you understand even the macros that are involved by looking at the micros first, you can make better decisions. Well, thanks for watching. We got into a lot of the details here. Primarily, we wanted to show you the insulation stuff. Give me a follow on Instagram. Pioneer Builders Inc. is my handle. Cover a lot of these things, day-to-day -day construction. And uh, really hope that you did enjoy getting into the details and the mathematics behind construction. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time on The Build Show.